Good morning, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Anniston, and all of Central Alabama. This is the CBS 42 Morning News with Art Franklin. 430, good morning to you. Welcome to the CBS 42 Morning News. I'm Art Franklin. And I'm Jamie Langley. Happy Monday and first day of spring, folks. Yes. In an hour, less yes. than an hour now. Yes, we're looking forward to <laughs> a nice spring day. Yeah, temperatures this afternoon in the 70s, so it's going to feel a whole lot like spring out there. No rain expected today. Here's a live look at the skies. This is our storm track tower cam in Birmingham. Temperatures a touch on the cool side. I wouldn't call it terribly cold, but 40s nonetheless, a little cool, especially lower 40s in Gadsden. So not necessarily spring air for the morning, but I promise for the afternoon there will be some big improvements. Clear sky to start the day, but a few clouds filter in by afternoon. We're already beginning to see some of those clouds filling in in South West Alabama temperatures there holding right around 50. Clearer skies back to our east, allowing those temperatures in center to fall into the upper 30s. Let me share your hour by hour breakdown. Those temperatures, again, well on their way into the 50s by mid morning, low to mid 60s through your noon hour, lower 70s by 1 o'clock this afternoon. And I expect us to continue to see this nice spring air in place this week, but we could see more rain on tap. I'll let you know when the wet weather arrives. That's ahead in your Storm Track 7 day forecast. Our Ashley, thanks a lot. Breaking overnight, firefighters respond to this two fires actually in Fairfield. The fire chief says the fire started after 1.30 this morning on Court F, right behind Fairfield High School. The fire started at one house and then spread to another. Both houses are vacant. The causes of those fires are under investigation. And happening today, FBI Director James Comey and National Security Agency Director Admiral Mike Rogers are set to testify before the House Intelligence Committee about Russia's alleged involvement in the 2016 election. Meanwhile, this is a live look at the nation's capital this morning. Jamie joins us from our digital newsroom with more information about today's meeting. Jamie. Well, besides Russia, Comey and Rogers will be addressing President Trump's unproven claim that former President Obama wiretapped Trump Tower. And today is also the start of hearings for Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch. FBI Director James Comey takes the hot seat later this morning as House lawmakers hold their first open hearing into Russia's influence in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. I think there are a few things that I'm hoping to hear. First, whether any Americans are being investigated for cooperating or conspiring with the Russians who interfered with our election. Second, the scope of that investigation. And third, a timeline for resolving it. Comey could also shed light on Mr. Trump's unproven claims that former President Obama wiretapped Trump Tower during the campaign. That's a terrible accusation to make. Of course, it's not true. So let's just grow up. A number of lawmakers from both parties say they have yet to uncover any proof of the president's claims. Others are holding out for more information. I'd like to first get to the bottom of this before saying what should be done. I don't know the basis for President Trump's assertion. I have a lot of respect for Susan Collins, but I have to differ with her on this. Uh, she said we need to get to the bottom of this. We are is at there any the bottom? bottom. We are there at the is bottom. nothing at the bottom. Also on Capitol Hill today, the first of several days of hearings begin for Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch. But I'll tell you this, Judge Gorsuch will be confirmed. If confirmed, Gorsuch would replace conservative justice Antonin Scalia, who passed away last year. Well, besides this already busy day, President Trump will also meet with Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates and the Iraqi Prime Minister. And stay with CBS 42 and CBS this morning for continuing coverage and more reaction. And right now, Birmingham family and the Birmingham Fire Department mourning the loss of a man killed in a house fire on Saturday. Willie Sumlin says his brother Larry Sumlin was inside this house when the fire started. Sumlin says his brother was a paraplegic and used a wheelchair to get around. Family member tried to rescue him, but wasn't able to get him out in time. A family member did have minor burns and was treated at the scene. Investigators are working to figure out how the fire started. The more we learn, we'll update you on air and online. Covering Brighton this morning, family and friends come together to remember the life of a teenager killed in a shooting. Be friendly toward one another rather than any other way. Relatives held a vigil yesterday for 18-year-old Tyshawn Miller. He was shot to death Saturday night in Brighton. His loved ones stood at the spot where Tyshawn died to honor his life and call for an arrest for his murder. Meanwhile, Brighton police say a person of interest is in jail right now. They are not releasing the name pending formal charges.
But our news team spoke with Tyshawn's mother, Delvina Miller. She says her son was out hanging out with some friends Saturday night when he was killed after someone started shooting. Miller says she wants her son's killer to answer for his actions and she wants justice. But I do want him punished for what he has done. I really do because it's too much going on. They need to be punished for whatever they do. Miller says her son was planning to go to college to join the military. Last year, her son worked as a volunteer for Brighton Mayor Brandon Dean's campaign. This is the first homicide of the year in Brighton. Right now, the Alabama Department of Corrections is looking for an escaped inmate. The Department of Corrections says 45-year-old Demetrius Harris left an assigned job in Montgomery around 11:20 Saturday night. He had been serving time at the Frank Lee Youth Center for a theft of property charge. Harris is 5 feet 9 inches, weighs 241 pounds. If you see Harris or know where he is, call 911 immediately. Now this morning, a Jasper man is dead after a crash in Walker County. 42-year-old Bobby John Hambry was killed when his GMC pickup truck ran off the road, hit a tree, and caught fire. Hambry was pronounced dead at the scene. That crash happened on Alabama State Highway 69 at mile marker 214. Alabama State Troopers continue to investigate. Happening today, trustees are set to vote a new president of Auburn University. An announcement from the university says board of trustee members will have a special call meeting at 1030 this morning to name a new president. The board is looking for a successor to Jay Googe, who plans to retire this summer. Googe has been president since 2007. Happening tomorrow, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute is scheduled to reopen to the public. This follows the second phase of building renovations. The VCRI will begin rescheduling tours immediately. The center will open from 10 o'clock in the morning to 5 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday and from 1 until 5 p.m. on Sunday. New this morning, more changes are expected to be coming to railroad crossings in Biloxi, Mississippi. The mayor says that he will ask the city to approve another crossing to the list of potential closures. The NTSB's report of a deadly train crash involving a charter bus is expected to be released early next month. Well, the Dudlani Street crossing is one of the most dangerous suggested by the city to close. Well, Biloxi Chief Administrative Officer Mike Leonard wants as many crossings on the list as possible. He says that CSX would likely give the green light. CSX likes to say that the only safe crossing is one that doesn't exist. And uh, so we're going to try and make some crossings not exist. But we are also aware that before we close a crossing, we've got work to do to make sure that the uh, parallel service roads that would allow people to move to an alternate site to cross the railroad have to be completed. Some see the possible closures as a problem, but others feel that the burden of safety is on those who cross over the tracks. Well, developing right now, French officials conduct an autopsy to determine if the suspect who attacked a soldier at Paris Orly Airport was high or drunk at the time of the assault. The suspect has been identified as 39-year-old French citizen who was known to police for his extremist beliefs and a string of criminal convictions, including armed robbery. Well, Saturday morning, the man wrestled a rifle from a female soldier on guard at Orly Airport, and he was shot to death by security forces. Also, the airport was shut down for several hours. Well, after this weekend's incident, the suspect's brother, father, and cousin were detained for questioning. And meanwhile, Europe remains on high alert after a wave of attacks in the last few years. 438, if you use a credit card or debit card, often you'll want to stay with us after the break. The information you need to hear to keep your card safe from a different kind of scam. We're just getting started on this Monday morning. Stay with us. You are watching the CBS 42 Morning News. This month, Civitan International is kicking off their 100th year of service throughout the world. And they were founded right here in Birmingham, Alabama. The club held a birthday party in March to celebrate their centennial year. Civitan International has come a long way since March 17, 1917. The founders wanted to make a difference in their world. And today, the club has over 40,000 members worldwide. It's in 49 countries, and they've got high school. Um, 
groups, they've got college groups, they've got YP groups. From the very beginning, calling it Civitan International, after they started the Birmingham Club, they always thought, well, this can go bigger because human nature is you want to help people. A proclamation from Alabama's Governor Robert Bentley has even declared March 17, 2017 as Civitan Centennial Week. In the early 90s, the Civitan International Research Center opened their doors, and this building and all the groundbreaking research that comes out of it is the flagship project of Civitan International. It was a sentinel moment for UAB. This institution supports uh, individuals from multiple departments and in the medical school, and the research they do ranges from very basic research to what is called translational research. Everybody in the, or in the group are making discoveries almost on a uh, weekly basis. You should be proud of you know what Birmingham has done for the world. Every community looks at what's going on in their area and they focus on that. One town might do a park for children. In Paris, France, they just did fresh water wells for a town in Africa. If you would like to get involved with Civitan International, the club welcomes you to join. That's what we're here for is to help people who are looking for a way to help people and maybe just don't know quite how. Visit Civitan.org for more information on how you can make a difference in your community. In Birmingham, Lillian Lalo, CBS 42 Community. And we welcome you back to the CBS 42 Morning News. Happening this week, the Birmingham Waterworks Board is declaring this Fix a Leak Week 2017. The board says the number one cause of high water bills is an undetected household leak. Nearly one trillion gallons of water is wasted each year in America because of leaks in or around the home. Just a quick uh, tip on that, if you go out to the meter, if the dial is spinning, you have everything off inside the home, that's a strong indication that you do have a leak on the property. Uh, if you turn everything off, the dial should be standing still. So we want to encourage customers to do that. Waterworks crews will hand out free toilet flappers and literature to customers. Jackson says faulty toilets are the biggest issue they see. Well, in consumer news this morning, we have an important recall or warning to protect you against credit fraud scam. Well, scammers are coming up with a new and clever way to access your credit card. They're pretending to be credit card fraud investigators. And while we may not have gotten a call from our credit or debit card company asking if we've made a purchase, scammers realize this is a clever way to get you to give out personal information. That's just what happened to one woman. Take a listen. They were saying that they were with Bank of America and that had fraudulent charges on my account and I needed to verify that I was the rightful owner of the credit card um, with my username and password. Well, in some cases, the scammers ask for your three-digit security code as verification and a fraud investigator says if anyone asks for your card number or expiration date, that should be a red flag to you. And as always, if you get a suspicious call, just hang up. Well, we're just a few moments from the official beginning of spring, 528 this morning. We call it the spring equinox. That's your fun fact for your Monday. And it's completely dry across central Alabama. It will stay that way throughout the next couple of days. Temperatures this morning, somewhat spring-like in areas. Down towards our southwest, lower 50s, Moundville at 51, 50 in Centerville. But a clear sky is providing some chilly air. Upper 30s in center, 41 in Gadsden. So a touch cooler east of 65, but more balmy west of 65. But as we break down our first day of spring, temperatures are so expected to stay right around 50 through around 730 this morning. And then a clearing sky, mostly sunny and mid 70s later on this afternoon. Again, it stays dry today, tomorrow. And can you believe we could be close to 80 degrees this week? I'll break that down ahead and I'll also let you know when your next chance of soaking rain could arrive. That's coming up in your storm track seven day forecast. Art. Ashley, thank you. 443 repaving starts today for a busy road in Vestavia Hills. We'll have details coming up. And some of Birmingham's best bus drivers are putting their skills to the test. Next, we have a look at the competition that's going international. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. We'll be right back. It's Family Leisure's annual floor model sale. Huge savings store wide. Save up to 50% on display model pool tables, bars and bar stools, theater seating, and more. It's time to make some room. Deep discounts on patio pools and play gyms. Floor model sale going on now at Family Leisure. Ask what makes it the best 3 Series ever, and we'll tell you it has more advanced suspension and steering, or even more control of the road. And it's near perfectly balanced to put performance first. 
But ask her for where the competition mimics us just to keep up. No comment. The BMW 3 Series. Shop Birmingham BMW, Grant Mills Road and I-459. Online at BirminghamBMW.com. Delsum helps control the impulse to cough for 12 hours, which means you're controlling your cough on your morning commute and later when you're joking with Beth. Even when most cough medicines stop, Delsum is still working. Delsum, the number one 12 hour cough medicine. He's a NASCAR champion who's faced thousands of drivers. She's a world class swimmer who stared down the best in her sport. But for both of them, the most challenging opponent was. PE blood clots in my lung. It was really scary. A DVT in my leg. I had to learn all I could to help protect myself. My doctor and I chose Xarelto. Xarelto, to help keep me protected. Xarelto is a latest generation blood thinner that's proven to treat and reduce the risk of DVT and PE blood clots from happening again. In clinical studies, almost 98% of patients on Xarelto did not experience another DVT or PE. Here's how Xarelto works. Xarelto works differently. Warfarin interferes with at least six blood clotting factors. Xarelto is selective, targeting just one critical factor interacting with less of your body's natural blood clotting function. Don't stop taking Xarelto without talking to your doctor, as this may increase risk of blood clots. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. It may increase your risk of bleeding if you take certain medicines. Xarelto can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Get help right away for unexpected bleeding, unusual bruising, or tingling. If you've had spinal anesthesia, watch for back pain or any nerve or muscle related signs or symptoms. Do not take Xarelto if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. Tell your doctor before all planned medical or dental procedures and before starting Xarelto about any conditions such as kidney, liver, or bleeding problems. You've gotta learn all you can to help protect yourself from DVT and PE blood clots. Talk to your doctor about Xarelto. There's more to know. Regional Medical Center Anniston was Alabama's first baby-friendly hospital. We're proud of that distinction because it means everything we do promotes healthy, happy babies. We encourage rooming in, skin-to-skin -skin contact after delivery, and exclusive breastfeeding. All the things that bring moms and babies closer. From the first ultrasound to the first birthday, RMC is dedicated to giving growing families a healthy, loving start. Visit rmcisforme.org. If you've been denied VA benefits, visit ForThePeople.com for answers to your questions. Morgan & Morgan, serving our veterans. Covering the news in Alabama and around the world. The CBS 42 Morning News with Art Franklin. And CBS This Morning starting at 4.30 on CBS 42. It's Family Leisure's Floor Model Spa Sale. Huge savings on all remaining floor model and in-stock spas. Four-person spa starting at $12.99. Six-person spas under $3,000. Free upgrades with every spa purchase. Floor Model Spa Sale going on now at Family Leisure. 447, welcome back. Right now, some of Birmingham's best city bus drivers are getting the chance to be recognized for their skills. Yesterday, they went before a group of judges to test their driving and safety skills in the annual bus and maintenance rodeo. Bus operators and maintenance teams race against the clock, all while following safety standards. It is a networking and training opportunity for the teams. Left turns, backing up, parking, all of the things that they experience every day when they're in heavy traffic. Well, the winning team and the bus radio will head to Nevada to compete in the international competition. And happening today, paving work is set to start on Sicard Hollow, Hollow Road in Vestavia Hills. The road will be repaved between Blue Lake Drive and Grants Mill Road. Work will be going on for approximately 60 days, including most Saturdays. Real-time traffic anchor Rachel Lumberg will have more details in our next half hour. Well, new this morning from South Alabama, businesses on Dauphin Island are seeing an uptick in business during the spring break season, and this winter was also an unusually busy period. Dauphin Island Mayor Jeff Collier says the island tends to attract families with children during the spring break period, of course. But today is the day we've all been waiting for. It's officially spring, and to be exact, spring begins at 528 this morning, and that's uh, central time, which is less than an hour for us. Um, to come. I mean, that's exciting. This is when the sun's rays are directly over the equator. So bye bye winter and happy <laughs> spring. <laughs> and we usher in spring with some nice warm temperatures. Yeah, I've been longing for this day ever since the first day of winter. So, so. Have you. <laughs> <laughs> so we yes. Spring is my favorite season. It's when everything blooms. I know for some it's not their favorite for their allergies, but yeah, yeah. I love to see the flowers and uh, it's yes, a great good time of year. year. For All sure. Right.
Tell us about it. Yeah, weather wise, going to be in the 70s today. It's going to warm up nicely this afternoon. Here's a live look at the skies this morning where we're looking at our storm track tower cam over Birmingham. Temperatures in Birmingham right now 49, mostly clear sky, just a couple of clouds lingering in Tuscaloosa at this hour. 41 in Gadsden, so a touch cooler up towards our north and to our east. That's where we're seeing a very clear sky. That sky, that clear sky, has enabled this very chilly air. 38 in center, so I'm not saying everywhere is necessarily a warm start. May not feel like spring as you walk out the door. Still may need the light jackets this morning, but I promise you can lose those layers later on this afternoon because these temperatures are going to be climbing into the mid to upper 70s across the board. Here's a look at your storm track radar dry scan across pretty much the entire deep south. If you can see at the top of your screen, there's some rain up towards uh, the uh, uh, Great Lakes states. But for us, dry as a bone. It's going to be dry today and dry tomorrow. There could be a small encounter with some rain late tomorrow night, but for the most part, I think most of us stay dry, but the better chance of rain arrives later this week. Let me break down your day, though, hour by hour. It's spring, and uh, by 6 a.m., spring will have sprung here in central Alabama, just as Jamie mentioned, 528 central time, 46 degrees, 47 by 7, 50 by 8 a.m., 53 by 9 o'clock. Still a mostly sunny sky. may see a few clouds here and there, but for the most part, a good amount of sunshine for our Monday. 61 by 11, 64 by uh, your noontime, 66 to 68 between 1 and 2 with those temperatures in the mid to upper 70s later on this afternoon. Here's a look at that storm track future cast as we kind of break out your day for you. Overnight tonight, temperatures only falling into the upper 50s to lower 60s, so it actually is going to be a fairly mild start to our Tuesday morning. And look what happens Tuesday afternoon. Those temperatures jump into the lower 80s, and there is going to be a small encounter with some wet weather that moves through in northeast Alabama late Tuesday evening. But again, it kind of just clips our viewing area. It's not going to be widespread rain for the rest of us. By Wednesday, clouds return, and by Thursday into Friday, that's when those rain chances really begin going up. So we'll continue tracking for that as we head towards the end of the week. It does look like we could see a few showers as well during the weekend. And that is a look at your storm track seven day forecast. Our Ashley, thank you. 451. If you love Girl Scout cookies but have noticed a difference, you're not alone. Straight ahead, why the bakery can change the taste of your favorite cookie. Hey, good morning, everybody. Madness reigns supreme in the NCAA tournament, plus, Auburn gets a walk off upset sweep on the weekend. We'll have those highlights and more coming up in sports. All right, Chris, thank you. Stay with us. You're watching CBS 42 Morning News. We'll be right back. Next ET, how the stars are preparing for dancing's premiere as Sharna gives us backstage secrets. And hey ET, it's me, Joey McIntyre. We're at home with this new kid on the block and his family. Next ET, <laughs> Monday at 6:30 on CBS 42. Coffee Club on the CBS 42 Morning News with Art Franklin is brought to you by Royal Cup Coffee and Tea. No matter what you drink, drink Royal Cup. Sign up today at WIAT.com. I'm Art Franklin. The CBS 42 Morning News and CBS This Morning coverage you can count on. When I take on the insurance company, I ain't settling for no small dough. I'm hunting for the big bucks. I'm Mike Slocum, the Alabama Hammer. You've been hurt in a car wreck. Let me hunt down the big bucks for you. Call me right now. Chevy is the most awarded car company three years in a row. Really? Let's see how quickly you can read through all their awards. 2017 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Kelly Blue Book 2016 Best Resale Value. 2016 JD Power Highest Quality Breaking. Ah. 10 Best Blah Blah Blah. Only about 90 more to go. 2017 IIHS Top Safety. 2017 North American Car of the Year. That's a lot of awards. Find your tag and get 3,000 total cash allowance on select Malibu vehicles when you finance with GM Financial. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Beds Express is closing out our inventory to bring in new models. This is your chance to save up to 70% on floor models, discontinued sets, one-of-a-kinds, mismatches, and closeouts. Save up to 50% on luxurious high comfort floor models. Get a Visa gift card up to $300 plus free delivery, two free pillows, a free sheet set, and a free comforter with select Tempur-Pedic sets. Take advantage of interest-free financing till 2023 and always get the lowest prices guaranteed. For the sleep of your dreams, just look for the Z's. Beds Express. I'm Mike Slocum, the Alabama Hammer. If you go fishing with the insurance adjuster, you may end up settling for some small fish. The last time I went fishing, I came back with a $25 million verdict. Now that's a fishing story you can believe. So after your car wreck, fish where the big fish are. 
Mike Slocum Law Firm is a proud sponsor for the CBS 42 Morning News. Well, welcome back. If you feel uh, like your Girl Scout cookies don't always taste the same, guess what? What? They're right. <laughs> oh, really? Well, it turns out that the cookies are actually made into two different bakeries. Who knew? The difference in Thin Mints, which is the best seller, is only slight. But the s'mores cookie can actually be two different cookies, depending on which bakery it comes from. If you're wondering, those two bakeries are in Louisville, Kentucky, and Richmond, Virginia. And it was a huge weekend for Beauty and the Beast. Well, no shocker there. The live action version of the Disney classic opened with $170 million. And this is the best March debut ever, the biggest ever debut for a PG rated movie, and the number seven domestic opening weekend of all time. You know, there's a rule in March Madness that even when you think your bracket is safe, it isn't. Well, Saturday saw some of the top seeds fall. Sunday was no different. The big one was Michigan and Louisville. Second half, Louisville up seven. Mango May thing with the rebound and the layup. We'll jump now to under seven to play tied at 55. No, Wagner for three, and the Wolverines lead 58 to 55. Under two to play. Wagner, check it out. Euro step with the layup. Wolverines pull the upset 73 to 69. SEC opening weekend for baseball, not kind to Alabama, but very good for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn had a chance to sweep the number five team in the nation, Florida, and start SEC play at three and do. We'll head to the third inning. They would have to work for it. Bases loaded. Dylan Ingram, that's a can of corn for the shortstop, but it should be easy, but it isn't. He drops it. Two runs come in, and we are. They're all tied up. Jump now to the ninth inning. Jonah Todd lays down the bunt to move the runners, but the throw to third goes way down the third baseline. Here comes the runners. Auburn wins in a knockoff, and they sleep, sweep Florida 6-5 to five, the final. Alabama hosted, hoping to avoid the sweep against Missouri. Pick things up in the bottom of the third. Runner on third for Connor Short. He's going to fly ball into center field. That's going to drop, and we are all tied up. Then jump to the top of the fifth. All tied with two on for Connor Brumfield. Clutch hit. up the middle hit and brings in two. two. Missouri Tigers sweep the tide nine to five. And the Globetrotters were in town yesterday. That has some of the best basketball players in the world. And then there was our own Simone Eli. Now Simone was a celebrity guest last night. She drops 50 in her Globetrotter debut. Okay, just kidding about that part. But she did score two points. They apparently approached her for a contract. But she obviously has to stay with us. So uh, we're going to keep her here instead of let her go with the Globetrotters. That's going to do it for sports. Back to you, Art. Thanks a lot, Chris. Good for Simone there. 4.57 the time right now. President Trump's proposed budget cuts could have major impacts here in Central Alabama. After the break, how cuts to Meals on Wheels could be devastating to seniors living in our area. Stay with us. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Good job, Simone. <laughs> Two points.